So what are all these paper clips about? Well, basically, every time I show up for myself and get some writing done, I get one paper clip. One day, one paper clip. The blue ones go into the piggy, the yellow ones I'll explain later, and the green ones get chained together in what's essentially a variation on the Seinfeld calendar method. Basically, the idea is that you've got this big visual reminder that you interact with every day, and it shows you that all those previous selves of you on those previous days were able to take the baton, run with it, and hand it to the next you. You don't want to be the one to drop it. You wanna grab that baton from the you of the day before and hand it to the you of the day after. A complimentary tip for that comes from Hemingway who tells us that it's a good idea to end the day's writing in a place that's easy to pick up the next day. So you maybe don't wanna end it in the middle of a scene, end it at the end of a scene if you can, or if you have to end it in the middle of the scene, try and find a place that you're excited to pick up again the next day. It's difficult to get in the habit of doing this, but if you can, what you find is that your subconscious works on the story when you're not actually sat at your desk. How this works is mysterious, but it feels something like your subconscious is sending its mycelial tendrils into the unknown territory of the unwritten story. And so doing that allows you to turn domestic tasks like washing the dishes into activities that move the story forward, uh, which suggests that those tasks should be treated with more respect than they sometimes are. Although some people love washing the dishes, find it therapeutic, but I bet there's some tasks that you have to do that you don't like doing. And maybe you just blast away your conscious awareness with a podcast or something. I do that sometimes and it's quite fun. But I would like to try and encourage myself to try and use those times a bit more um, intelligently and think, okay, how can I assist my subconscious to work on this story problem if I'm stuck or if I'm excited about the scene where I've left it, then how can I amplify that invisible underground capacity? Because work is being done. You just can't see it happening. You're familiar with this if you wake up in the morning after trying to learn a new skill, like juggling or riding a unicycle or tightrope walking, any of the normal skills that people like to learn, and you suddenly find, oh, I couldn't do this yesterday after two hours practice, but now I can, that's odd. Same thing with writing. I think you should choose the podcast carefully, the music you listen to carefully, in a way that assists and amplifies that incredible capacity that your unconscious has to figure out what should happen next in the story. Because you can't always finish the day's writing in a place that's exciting and you're interested in where it's gonna go. Sometimes you're just stuck and that's where the existential fear can slip in because if you're someone that has stitched their identity to writing, then your purpose in the world, your calling is to tell compelling stories. And if the story's broken at that moment, then you can slip into some kind of state of emergency. Uh, look how short my nails are. As ridiculous as it sounds, paper clips can help with that. Somehow, the simple ritual of crossing off a day on a chart or adding a paper clip to your chain helps you show up for yourself. But what does showing up for yourself actually mean? What's the minimum that you need to do to earn a paperclip for that day. That's a tricky one, and you have to negotiate with yourself to figure it out. But something that might help is creating a form, just a loose structure, a flexible structure, and also an ideal to work toward. So this is what mine looks like at the moment. By the way, this is if I have 
the day completely free, which gets increasingly rare. But when I do, this is what I do. What it does allow is you to go, all right, I had this amount of time. It might have only been 15 minutes. Did you show up for yourself in those 15 minutes? The form is more of an ideal to aim for rather than something that you're realistically going to achieve every day. Some days life just gets in the way and you can't do any writing. Maybe there's a family emergency or a friend needs some help or maybe you're just absolutely exhausted and you didn't manage it. On those days, I still ask the question, did I get on with myself that day? Was it a good day? Even though I didn't get any writing done, did I tackle the damn tax return to free up time in the future to actually write? And if I did on those days, then I get a yellow paperclip. That's what these yellow ones are for. And I strongly recommend sticking to my color scheme. No, I'm joking. I challenge you to invent your own with this. Um, how could you do it in a way that works best for you? Are you going to use a big calendar like the Seinfeld method where you see the entire year on one big piece of paper? Or are you going to do paper clips? Are you going to chain together pieces of foraged grass? Anything you want. It's basically about self-knowledge. Gaining more self-knowledge however you can and becoming a student of your own fire because stories require a steady heat to get cooked properly and to the end where you don't abandon it halfway through or after the first rewrite. Sounds a bit like I know what I'm on about. I don't really know what I'm on about. I'm just trying things out, but there's lots of room for improvement. Rewards help and they should probably involve you having as much fun as possible or replenishing the creative wells or just having a no pressure day where you can do anything you want, including nothing. Doing that creates a bridge between the part of you that wants to be disciplined and do things and the part of you that needs to just relax and be. You can think about this as some people do in terms of the rational decision maker and the instant gratification monkey in conflict with each other. Or you can think about it through the lens of archetypal psychology in terms of Senex, the wise old disciplined mentor and the Pua, the eternal child. Or you can think about it in terms of mythic interchange and mythic dynamics, Saturn and Aphrodite. One of them wants to be in bliss and feel and enjoy and have a pleasurable life. And the other is about strictness and limitation. And if you're mixing these energies of the, the love and the beauty and the courageous sensuality with discipline, then I think you're onto a good thing. Seeing things through different lenses is something that's interesting to me. And if it's interesting to you as well, let me know because you can be a co-creator of what happens on this channel. It's not set in stone, it's semi-improvisational and I don't really know where it's going. All right, well, I hope some of that's useful. Let me know if you try it and it works or doesn't or you come up with some useful variations and we can share that knowledge and all improve together. All right, thanks for watching to the end and good luck. Yucky.